What's up, guys? This is Coach Gaglione here. This is another edition of the Powerlifting for the People podcast. And uh, over the next several episodes, uh, may not be consecutive, but I want to talk about the three kind of books uh, that I've come out with over the years. Um, and today we're going to talk about Powerlifting for the People, which is kind of our overarching brand of our company and uh, aptly named our podcast. And the whole goal of our company is to kind of build a stronger community. Uh, so I want to kind of uh, take some time uh, on the po- using the podcast as a platform uh, just to kind of discuss the purpose of these books, who the books are for. So um, while I think powerlifting for the people is th- the information in it is the most basic, uh, the principles in it are probably the most important for the everyday person. Uh, this is who this book is for. So the only kind of issue that um not that I kind of uh, has come up, but that I kind of see with it is that unfortunately, probably the people that have purchased the book in the past and that are purchasing it are not always the people that need it. So what I recommend is if you have a loved one, a friend, uh, or somebody that you know, maybe a coworker, uh, maybe you give this book as a gift to them to kind of explain to them why uh, powerlifting should be for them and why strength training is for them. So what I'm going to do over the next, again, several episodes is kind of outline each book. I want to kind of just go over the table of contents and kind of briefly go over the what's actually in the book. And then obviously we'll include some links in the description below uh, if you guys want to support the program. Uh, like I said, we don't really make a ton of money, very, very minimal, uh, but every kind of book sale helps. But the main thing with the book sales, uh, every you know, kind of book that's in a household and every kind of you know book that gets sold, whether it be in the United States or overseas, uh, just one more person that's going to get a little bit more educated on our methods, a little bit more educated on the proper strength training methods and kind of the benefits of strength training. So uh, just a little bit of um, kind of background again, but uh, if, you, if this is your first time listening, I'm Coach Gaglion. I've been powerlifting and coaching uh, for the last 13 years. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I've found in my life that strength training has been a huge part of my life. Uh, I've gone through many different phases. I was an athlete, and uh, becoming stronger was a, a big part of my athletic success. Uh, although I didn't uh, always, uh, I didn't know the right way to train, and that's why I decided to uh, become a coach and learn the proper methods. Because uh, I know if I had trained a little bit better, I would have been able to achieve my goals as a high school wrestler and football player. And as I've kind of dove more and more into powerlifting, um, you know, I took it as far as you know to competing at, at, in the super heavyweight class. I've had uh, best lifts in competition of a 900-pound squat, which is equipped, uh, 575 equipped bench, and a 660 equipped deadlift, uh, and I've also pulled 700 pounds in the gym. So I achieved a pretty high level uh, for me, for someone an average Joe from from uh, Plain Edge, New York, uh, from Long Island, New York, uh, and I've learned a lot over the way. I and mean, what we're trying to do is try to show people how they can power lift and strength train in a healthy manner. Uh, and kind of get all the benefits of strength training. So that's what powerlifting for the people is all about. So again, uh, this book would be really served for people that maybe don't understand the benefits of strength training. Um, and maybe if they're kind of maybe afraid to get started or if they're not sure how to get started or if they're maybe a little bit on the fence of uh, kind of getting started in any type of resistance training. So when we go through the table of contents, we kind of go through like the message of powerlifting for the people and all that. And one of the biggest things that we try to explain in the initial uh, kind of chapters is a lot of the benefits of strength training and resistance training. Um, you know, when it comes to strength, uh, strength is a really cool thing because it's one of the qualities that helps enhance. It could really enhance all other qualities, which is rare for any uh, rare for any other form of training or any other kind of quality you kind of get in the gym. Uh, getting stronger is going to provide the foundation for every other goal that you have. Uh, so, and we outline a lot of these things in detail in the book, uh, powerlifting for the people. So for example, if you want to run faster, uh, being stronger is going to, let's say, uh, if you are a sprinter or if, even if you're a marathon runner, each step is going to be like a certain percentage of like your, your leg strength. So if we say like leg strength is represented maybe in the form of a squat, the stronger your squat is, the stronger your legs are. Uh, in order to move faster, in order to move for a longer distance, you're going to have to put in less and less force and less and less uh, effort as compared to your one rep max or as compared to your absolute strength. So the higher your out, uh, absolute strength, the more potential there is for force production 
which is going to allow for greater speed and even potentially greater conditioning. Uh, so a stronger athlete is also going to be a more resilient athlete. Uh, even in, in when we're talking about flexibility and mobility, uh, someone might be very flexible, but if they don't have the stability and the strength requirements, uh, they're not going to be able to fully access their full range of motion in a dynamic fashion when it comes to sports. So obviously there's going to be a point diminishing return, but for most, especially young athletes, high school athletes, they are nowhere near uh, that strength level. So for example, like for, for myself, using some of my guys as an example, uh, I trained a lot of high school wrestlers and football players. I have found that anyone that achieved a high level in wrestling, whether that be a county champion, old county, uh, place in the states or state champion, uh, all the, the lightweight wrestlers were able to do at least 20 chin-ups, uh, which requires a lot of strength, a lot of back strength. Uh, all the high school wrestlers were able to do, uh, the heavyweight wrestlers were at least able to do 10 chin-ups. And uh, even the heavy guys, the real super heavyweight guys were able to do at least 10 chin-ups. Uh, and they were able to deadlift, uh, I'd say at least, uh, usually typically around somewhere in between two and a half, uh, two to two and a half times their body weight. Uh, and when it comes to absolute poundages, even the lightweight guys uh, were pulling at least 365 to 400 whether that be on a trap bar or a straight bar, uh, so pretty substantial. Uh, and some of the heavyweight guys were, you know, more in like that five to six hundred range uh, for the people that were really successful in high school and a collegiate level. Um, as far as benching and squatting, they didn't. I found they didn't have as much carryover to wrestling in particular, uh, but still, uh, those lifts were very strong as well. And then for just in general, like let's say if you take a two hundred pound athlete, usually like a double body weight squat. Uh, a double body weight squat would be about a 400 squat. Uh, one and a half times body weight bench would be about a 300 pound bench, and a two and a half times body weight deadlift would be about um, would be about a 500 pound uh, deadlift. So, like if you're, I always say, quote unquote, I say if you're like a three, four, five guy, that's those are pretty darn good numbers. Uh, and when we found a similar thing to a lot of the female athletes, I uh, worked with a lot of lacrosse players, soccer players, uh, softball players. And uh, a lot of those sports required a great deal of power, uh, and we found that like our most successful women, uh, you know, were you know deadlifting, you know, like I said, uh, let's at least uh, same similar kind of numbers, uh, maybe a little bit less. So definitely like probably like a, uh, I would say like a, about a two times body weight deadlift. So if we've got a hundred and fifty pound girl, for example, uh, they were close to you know like I said around anywhere in that two seventy five to three hundred pound deadlift range, um, as far as as far as uh, squatting, uh, usually about a one and a half to a 1.75 times their body weight. So they might be, you know, lift squatting uh, anywhere from, you know, the 185 to 225 range uh, for the women. And if they were benching their body weight, that was usually pretty good. So if uh, women, you know, that, so a lot of those women were, you know, benching anywhere between uh, the lightweight women, uh, 100, 115 pounds or upwards for the heavyweight girls, more uh, to like 135 to 155 range. So... And a lot of our most successful girls were also able to do a, a handful of chin-ups as well, uh, just for reference. So strength training, so those were kind of like the standards that we hit for athletes. So uh, being a stronger athlete is going to help. And then once you kind of were able to hit those standards and focusing on more speed qualities and other qualities, uh, depending on what the athlete's strengths and weaknesses are, is going to be very beneficial. But a lot of athletes don't never actually uh, get to those marks, and it takes uh, a lot of time. And what strength is uh, very slow to build uh, but after you get it, it's uh, fairly, I don't want to say easy to maintain, but a lot easier to maintain where something like conditioning, you lose fast, but you could also gain the conditioning quicker. So spending the bulk of your off season strength training is going to be a, a really great benefit. So um, strength training also, if your goal is to build muscle mass, is going to be very important. Uh, if you have a higher absolute strength, uh, so for example, let's say you're trying to build a, a bigger chest. If you're able to bench press 300 pounds and you want to, like I said, use 225 for your working sets, uh, that's going to be um, a smaller percentage of your one rep max than if your max was only 250. You're going to be able, to, you're going to be able to lift heavier weights for higher repetitions uh, to allow for greater workload and greater muscle stimulus and greater muscle growth, uh, so you can get more out of less if you're trying to build muscle, uh, and if you are trying to lose body fat. On the same token, and being able to keep that muscle on, keep that lean body mass is going to be critical for your health. Uh, and as far as in the health front, being able to have stronger uh, stability in your joints, uh, more bone density, increased uh, 
you know, durability of the ligaments and tendons in the body, it's going to be very beneficial. Uh, the key is really just to ensure that you're using the appropriate variation and appropriate uh, exercise selection, range of motion, uh, etc., uh, based on your body type. So, using my mom and dad as an example, uh, they do powerlifting. You know, they do powerlifting movements. They bench, they squat, they deadlift. Uh, you know, right now my parents uh, come anywhere from two to three times a week. Um, I started them both out, which is doing body weight squats and uh, dumbbell benching and kettlebell deadlifting and uh, usually of a higher block. So we started with a, a short range of motion uh, and then eventually increased the range of motion as they got more stable and stronger. And then over time, they were able to do uh, more complicated variations. Uh, so from doing the kettle, the body weight squat, they would go to a kettlebell squat and then eventually a belt squat. And now they are able to squat with the barbell. They're able to bench with the barbell, and then my dad is also able to deadlift from the floor with pretty darn good form. Um, you know, he went from, you know, like, they're and they're a lot stronger. They have better uh, stability, better quality of life. Uh, my dad has lost about 30 pounds. My mom is, uh, lean body mass has increased, and she's gotten leaner and, and stronger. Uh, so especially for the elderly people, uh, being able to keep that, that lean muscle mass is going to be important. Uh, power and lean muscle mass really deteriorate quite quickly as we age and uh, becoming stronger and doing resistance training is going to be a, a big way to counteract aging. That's going to be really important for them. Uh, so whereas we don't necessarily need to be as aggressive with the loading with them, uh, just doing some sort of loading and some sort of strength training a couple of times a week uh, is going to be very, very beneficial for them. So in the book, we kind of outline, um, you know, if you're an athlete, if you're a recreational lifter, if you're trying to put muscle on, if you're trying to get leaner, we kind of outline all the different reasons why you'd still want to strength train and how you'd kind of work that in your routine. And even some like the science and some of the studies behind it, uh, just to kind of give people a little bit of an inkling of why you should be strength training. So again, if you're an athlete, uh, having a strength is going to be, give you a great foundation for all their athletic qualities. If you're looking to build muscle or drop body fat, it's going to be very effective for allowing you to uh, do more work and get more out of your workouts. Whether you're trying to build muscle or lose body fat, it's going to help keep that lean mass on and also help burn more calories. Uh, the more muscle you have, the more calories you're going to burn. And if you're an elderly person, it's going to help improve the quality of your life, improve your strength, your stability, uh, allow you to maintain your mobility, maintain your power, and maintain your lean body mass as you age. So that is going to be really critical. Another thing that we kind of go over is a lot of the myths behind powerlifting. Um, again, people listening to this probably know that these are not true, but that powerlifting can be dangerous. Uh, these movements, you know, squats are bad for your knees, deadlifts are bad for your back, uh, you know, bench press is bad for your shoulders. But as we know, it just really depends on how much loading you're doing, the using the appropriate range of motion, uh, the appropriate frequency, and also the appropriate mechanics and form uh, based on the anthropometry, the body limb lengths, and the strengths and weaknesses of the individual athlete. So there's a right and a wrong way to do these movements, and there's a right and wrong way to implement these methods. Uh, but I truly believe that powerlifting is for the people, and there's a safe way to do it for everyone. So there's a lot of different myths. Uh, also, just touching a barbell is not going to make a woman bulky and all these things uh, because of the lack of testosterone they have compared to men. So uh, there is a lot of myths. So we kind of go through the different myths in this book as well. So if someone is kind of scared of lifting, uh, that chapter will definitely serve them well uh, to read that. Uh, moving along into the book, we also have a small section uh, about about com competition and some of the benefits of competition. Uh, it's kind of brief because we have a, a whole book on getting ready to compete, which is our third book, which we'll kind of go over a little bit later uh, in our podcast series. Uh, but we talk about you know goal setting and things like that and the importance of having goals, the importance of uh, challenging yourself, and powerlifting is a great way to kind of stay motivated uh, and allow your to come to the gym with a purpose because we think having purpose is very important. Uh, it's one of our values at Gaglion Strength. And then we talk. We have a small section about the diet and just making sure you get enough protein in because as you start to strength train, uh, being able to support the muscle growth and uh, you know maintain the the lean body mass is going to be critical. So making sure you have enough protein and nutrients and micronutrients to support that. Small section on diet, not huge by any means. But again, this is very, very basic information for the people starting out. So um, that's just a quick overview of powerlifting for the people. Uh, so again, if you uh, 
you know, have somebody in your life, a loved one, a sibling, a family member that you feel like would benefit from strength training. Uh, we always talk about that third party principle. Sometimes hearing it from an expert, hearing it from somebody else besides yourself can be beneficial. I know with myself, it took me a very long time to get my family on, on board with strength training and now they're reaping the benefits of it. So, uh, you know, having that contrast between, the, you know, powerlifting is for the elite level athlete. It is for the high level competitor. someone that's going to really push the envelope. Uh, but it is someone is also for somebody that just wants to be strong and fit and healthy and uh, improve the quality of your life and everything in between. It could be as aggressive or as uh, fun and recreational as you'd like. So that's what powerlifting for the people is all about. We believe everyone possesses the ability to get stronger and we want to build a stronger community. So if you want to support the program, you can go to Amazon. You can look up powerlifting for the people or look up John Gaglione. That's me, my chubby little self. Uh, and you could support the program by purchasing a book and we recommend that you give this book as a gift uh, to somebody that's kind of looking to start. So uh, one of the other things I'd like to uh, kind of close with, uh, one of the benefits that we didn't really talk about too much, just kind of the impression about like lifting weights to how it could help your anxiety and depression and things like that, especially as uh, you know, with social media and, and the busy world we live in, a lot of people uh, deal with a lot of mental illness and disorders. I know I've been diagnosed with depression and and I still struggle with anxiety and lifting has definitely helped me quite a bit and helped a lot of our, our members too, with a lot of the, some of the mental stuff that we deal with. So it's going to help really improve the quality of your life, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually as well. So if you have somebody that needs to, uh, get involved in strength training, uh, check out, go to Amazon, get them the book is a gift. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully they crack it open and they get something. We just want to tra change, the lives of, of people and build a stronger community one book at a time. And I hope this message finds you guys well. Uh, if you enjoyed listening to the podcast and you want to support the program, check out the links below. You could buy a book, uh, give it to a friend, and uh, please give the podcast a five-star review. It helps other people find us. Thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate you come, uh, taking the time out of your day uh, to hear our message. Uh, till next time, stay strong, and I'll see you soon.